Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to this first webinar on the revision of uh, the high-level structure, HLS. Uh, my name is René Gouwens, uh, Product Manager at NEN on Management Systems. And next to me your, uh, is Dick Hortensius, Senior Consultant Management Systems. And the reason uh, why we're having this webinar is because uh, Dick is also the secretary of the International Working Group on the Revision of the HLS, Task Force 14. Um, and what, would you, what we would like to do uh, in the next uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, is um, uh, address uh, the, uh, the different aspects of the HLS, uh, the reason for the review and other um, uh, aspects. If we look at the agenda, You'll see we have divided it in three blocks. Uh, first and all on the HLS and the impact of the current HLS, why uh, and why there's a reason uh, for revision uh, at this moment. In February of this year, there was a first uh, meeting of the task force in Atlanta, and we would like to see what were the discussions and the main topics uh, at this uh, uh, meeting. And of course, the revision, the revision of the HLS will take um, uh, probably uh, the next two years time. Um, and we would like to address some future topics and uh, the things that we will see uh, coming ahead. Um, Dick, to start with, um, we're talking about the revision of the HLS, the high level structure. But in fact, what is the HLS? The HLS, the high level structure, is something initiated by the Netherlands uh, a number of years ago uh, to um, provide an architecture for management system standards, uh, a common structure, a common vocabulary, with the aim to better align those standards and to enable the users of those standards to apply multiple standards in an integrated way within their own business management system. In the former years, most of these management system standards um, had a different structure of their elements, had a different philosophy of what a management system is. Um, with HLS, we provided uh, the common basis for all these management system standards, again, to assist future uh, uh, users in, um, well, easier application of those standards within their own business management system. Yeah. And if you're um, talking about uh, uh, former days, we're talking about the period uh, before the publication of the HLS? Yes, actually the, the before the year 2012, when the first edition of HLS was finished and incorporated in the ISO uh, directives and became obligatory um, to be used by all technical committees. And HLS, we can show that in, in, in a figure, is the core of what we call the plug-in model. And this model shows that the HLS is the core, uh, that all the management system standards, the well-known ISO 9001 for quality management, 4001 for environmental management, and all those other standards actually act as plug-ins on that core requirements embedded in HLS. And you can see this also as a model that an organization can apply, uh, they apply the management system standards and embed them in their own management system. So that these management systems are not separate entities within an organization, but are embedded in the management system that the organization operates. Yeah, on. but we see a couple of standards now in this, in this picture. Um, but in fact, how many standards do you think are following the HLS? Um, at this moment? Uh, the total list is still growing. Uh, there is, well, about 40 standards now that are labeled as management system standards within the ISO portfolio. And these are almost all based on HLS. There's a very small number of standards that still have to go through a revision cycle and adopt HLS. And if you um, look at the user community uh, worldwide, there are millions of organizations that apply one or more of these ISO management system standards. So we are talking about a large number of users and a very important segment of the ISO portfolio 
of standard. Okay, and if you look at the content of the HLS, why is it so um, vital for organization? Uh, because if you look at standards uh, as 9001 and 14001, the HLS, the core requirements, are about 40 to 50 percent of the requirements in the standards. So changing things in HLS automatically mean changes in part of the standards on specific topics. So the end users, um, for the end users, HLS is, is very important because it is actually the backbone of the ISO management systems and can also be seen as the reference for the backbone of a management system that an organization operates itself. Yeah, for their operating system. So what are in fact the, the elements in the current uh, HLS? Yeah. The elements in the current HLS are shown in the next slide. Um, and that's another advantage of HLS. It, it doesn't only facilitate the alignment of management system standards, but the structure is um, very logic compared to the former structures of the various standards. This structure really follows the way in which organizations operate. Um, if you want to do business, if you want to, to adopt things like quality, sustainability, or safety, you have to be aware of the business environment in which you operate. We call that the context of the organization. You should think about which are my stakeholders, what is the regulatory environment, what are trends and developments in society that I have to take into account when I want to give, uh, to pay attention to quality, safety or sustainability. And from that context, I can, um, can assess which are the risks and opportunities that I need to address in my management system to ultimately provide products and services that meet stakeholder and societal demands uh, and, and how I um, can make uh, improvements in my organization and resolve, uh, uh, lead to better performance in the eyes of my stakeholders and society in general. Okay, so uh, if you look at the, 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 the way it's structured, it can have a big effect on uh, the way the organizations are uh, organized, the way they, they it, it connects to the organizational structure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so why this review then now, if it's already such a good structure? Um, well, every ISO standard is reviewed um, three or five years after each uh, publication. Uh, the reason for that is that ISO standards should be up to date with technological and societal developments. HLS you can consider to be a specific type of standard. It was published, as I said, in 2012. So in 2019, we have already uh, seven years of experience with application of HLS, and that's a good moment to learn from past experience, to take into account new developments, and to assess uh, whether um, it needs to be changed and why and in what respects. And that was the reason that uh, ISO conducted a review of HLS last year and the decision was made to start the revision. Okay. And um, of course, um, you're the representative from Holland, but why do we take such a big part in this revision and, and why are we as Holland the secretary? Well, we have seen in the last years that um, HLS and the new generation of management systems based upon HLS was uh, enthusiastically accepted at the national level. Many organizations thought it was a good step forward to have that new architecture of the management system standard and that HLS assisted organizations in applying multiple standards in an integrated way. And also, as I showed, the new structure much better aligned with how organizations operate in general. And we would like to keep that momentum. And once the HLS is revised, we thought it important that we uh, assist ISO in redesigning partly HLS and make a next step forward in management systems that are keeping pace with developments within business and society. Okay, thank you. Um, then looking at the revision itself, 
Yeah, if we, if, we, if we go to the next uh, uh, content, uh, the next block in the in the webinar, talking about the revision. Um, normally, reviews of standards start with setting a scope. So, what in fact is the scope of this revision we're looking at? Yeah, the the scope was established by JTCG. That's the abbreviation for the Joint Technical Coordination Group. That is within ISO a group that coordinates the activities of the technical committees that develop management system standards. This JTCG was responsible for the first edition of HLS. The group conducted the review last year and decided in September to initiate this revision and establish the task force um, to, to do that. Um, the review showed that um, this should be what we call a limited revision. Uh, that means that we will not redesign the structure, uh, the current structure of clause 5, 4 till 11. Um, that, that is a good structure. Um, we will keep that. But within that structure, there are various paragraphs and a number of requirements. And we think that adjustments on that level can be made to improve um, the consistency of the text, uh, but also to improve the way in which that text is used in the various discipline specific uh, standards. And JTCG uh, has set the scope in such a way that we again call this a limited uh, revision. Okay, and there's a, there's, a, there's a planning for the two years ahead. Yeah. So how does this look like? Yeah, we have a, a, a slide on that process as well. Um, it started with the review in the year 2018. Um, the decision was made to start the revision and a first uh, invitation to provide comments was issued to the technical committees and the ISO national member bodies. And um, we said we should be able to do this job in two years time. So you see um, the time scale that ends with the year 2021, where the new HLS should be incorporated in the ISO directives. And in between, we have now scheduled five meetings of the task force, and uh, we see various stages. Um, these are not the formal stages of standards development, uh, because this is not a standard like a normal standard, but uh, we will work in a, a similar way with working drafts that will be circulated for comments to the technical committees and national member bodies to provide input for the next stage. And finally, there will be, you could say, a final draft that will be put to a vote to the national member bodies as the, as the final stage. Yeah. Um, we skip a little bit the slide on the establishment of the task force itself. It's good to, to know that Nigel Croft, um, a Brazilian representative is the chair of the task force. He was for many years the chair of the subcommittee that developed ISO 9001. I myself played the role as a secretary of that task force and the technical committees and ISO member bodies had the option to nominate experts to do the work. Theoretically, that could be a very large group, but in practice we expect 50 to 60 core experts with a larger group around this that, that provide input. And also all the national mirror committees will be involved um, during the various stages to provide comments on drafts that we will circulate in yeah. the upcoming years. Yeah. And looking at the, at the revision, um, and it's interesting um, uh, to, to, to already make the connection um, at, of uh, 9001, uh, because um, is the revision of the HLS, in fact, also the revision of ISO 9001? Uh, partly it is, because all of HLS will be embedded in a future edition of ISO 9001. So every change that we make in the core requirements will automatically be a change in the new edition of 9001. Um, as I showed, we will try to finalize this by the year 2021. Um, ISO 9001 was published in 2015 and is actually up for systematic review 
um, in 2020, well, before uh, any conclusions are made on whether or not to revise either 9001 and setting up a working group to do so, you will end up in 2021, 2022, and then, then the revision can start with the new edition of the HLS. So yes, it will be in, have an impact, and in timing, we are um, well ahead of that revision, and actually the new edition uh, can be based on the new edition mm. of HLS. And of course, it's not only 9001, but uh, in 2015 also um, uh, 14001 was published, so it will have the same effect on yeah. those very important management system standards. Um, another question is, when you see the planning, you have five meetings planned, mm -hmm. as, I, as I see it. So those are the moments that people, users, can influence this uh, process? Yeah, all national <coughs> bodies and all technical committees will make their own arrangements on how to consult, um, well, their stakeholders, their members. Uh, and specifically, those drafts for comments will be widely circulated in technical committees on the national levels and then many stakeholders and users of the standards will have an option to contribute and influence uh, the process. Okay, and okay. you already um, uh, gave a glimpse of what the content will be of the revision with the limited revision as an uh, important factor, but what is in fact, uh, the, the, what are in fact the aspects of that limited revision? Yeah, we, we can see those um, Partly, they were already specified in the project plan um, that was established by the JTCG. Partly, we have derived those topics from the initial comments that we got uh, by the beginning of the year. Well, on top of the list is uh, risk and risk management. Uh, why? Uh, risk and risk-based thinking, risks and opportunities was an important element of HLS and therewith an important element of all those new ISO management system standards. It was positively welcomed by many end users on one hand. On the other hand, we have seen that in the various discipline specific standards, there are varieties in the way in which risk and opportunities, risk management is embedded in those standards. So we think that it is a good moment to review those differences and to see how can we improve HLS or the rules on how to apply HLS or the guidance to HLS in such a way that that whole risk-based concept, uh, risk and opportunities is better understood and is better embedded in the various standards. And if you say we, you mean the total group of users that gave feedback on the current HLS? Or? Yeah, we have got feedback on this topic and we are the members of Task Force okay. 14 yeah. that need to think how can we learn from those experiences and improve the text of HLS or the guidance to okay. HLS. But other topics are um, we have a number of common elements in the current HLS. We have seen that there are um, discipline specific standards that have added elements to the backbone of HLS. Uh, an example is uh, a clause on emergency preparedness that is not part of HLS, but can be found in standards like 40001 environmental management or uh, 45001 occupation health and safety management. Um, and in other standards, is that a new common element or is that an optional element that we should try to give guidance upon for those standards that would like to incorporate that? Another example is information management that is actually applied in 9001, organizational knowledge, or in ISO 45001 on asset management that have a specific clause on information management. That is also something that we will consider um, just that has implications for HLS or the guidance. Um, so there is a number of other topics that we have seen uh, embedded in the, in the specific management system standards that are now considered on, um, well, the relevance for HLS itself. 
but you see, um, uh, I think you said the chapters won't change of the HLS, yeah. but it could mean that you add clauses in a specific chapter. Yeah, that, that, that's possible. Um, the limited revision means that we first will look at the guidance, whether we can put relevant information for technical committees in there. And only if we are convinced that this is really uh, applicable to all management system standards across all disciplines, then we can consider to include it as an additional paragraph within the structure that we won't change. Okay. But um, <coughs> this would be a very good justification for doing so because um, it is clearly um, described as a limited revision and a JTCG will have a very careful look that we stay within the boundaries of what was okay. decided. And, and they will in the end decide if the results will be taken um, into the uh, yeah. guidelines. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this was all input for the revision. So what happened in Atlanta in February? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was an interesting first meeting. Um, like all ISO meetings or ISO groups that meet for the first time, uh, you have to uh, get um, well to, to 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 get known to each of the of the members. Uh, it's always a little bit uh, guessing and surprise with what with what sort of attitude people uh, come to the table. Um, uh, Nigel Croft and I spent a couple of days in Delft to uh, carefully prepare the meeting, go through all the comments, identify uh, the big topics that uh, that should be discussed in Atlanta. I must say that we were very pleased with the the open attitude of members that were present, members from technical committees, uh, members uh, from uh, the, the ISO member bodies. Uh, we had a very open discussion, um, sometimes, um, well, quite tough. People um, did clearly express their opinion, but it was in an open and constructive way, and, and all topics um, that, that we identified upon uh, beforehand were indeed put um, to discussion in Atlanta. Okay, and what, what, what were, were those the topics that uh, you just mentioned? or? Yeah, no. actually, if you look at, the, at, at what, what we dealt with in Atlanta, there were a couple of administrative issues, huh, like uh, determination, review of the, the project plan, scheduling the meetings over the next uh, two years. And then we spent most of the time debating the topic of risk and risk management. And why is that such an uh, important topic to address? Um, with an ISO, you can say there are two, you could say, communities around risk. There is one community around ISO 31000, the general guideline on risk management that, that takes the broad organizational approach to risk management, um, addressing all topics addressing risk and opportunities at all levels in an organization from the strategic to the operational level risk as a neutral concept that can lead to threats and opportunities for an organization and on the other hand you have the community about around product and process safety a long-standing um, you could say topic within iso where risk is more seen as uh, the potential negative effects potential harm well, but mainly on the operational level on the operational yeah. level processes products yeah. and services within a management system those two approaches um, are aligned because a management system is about the broader organizational perspective on one hand but also on the operational risk um, as assessment and, and treatment so what we need to do is to try to build a bridge between the two approaches and describe the requirements in HLS in such a way that we provide organizations and technical committees with a very clear structure and language on how to align the broader risks and opportunities that an organization faces with what are the relevant risks to treat at the operational and product project level. Yeah, so it's not so much a choice, that you have to make in, in this task force, mm -hmm. but more the alignment of these two visions. Yeah, that, that, that is the challenge ahead. Okay. Uh, we debated that for uh, one and a half day. 
and we couldn't reach consensus yet on the definition of risk and and and, and the, 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 the relationship between the risk and opportunities. So we decided to seek feedback from the technical committees and the ISO member bodies on a number of questions around this topic as input for making further decisions during the next meeting and actually make a decision in which way we will address the topic in, in the new edition of HLS. Yeah, so the, the, there was the identification of points in Atlanta and now looking forward, you see you need more feedback from uh, users, uh, from the committees on certain aspects that you will uh, deepen in the in the coming year, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, we established a number of study groups on potential new common elements or optional elements. Um, this is shown in this slide. Uh, an interesting one is, of course, the first huh, on governance, leadership and culture. Leadership is, of course, clause five in the current HLS. But we see that there is a lot of attention nowadays uh, on the relationship between management and management systems and governance. Uh, there is also uh, the acknowledgement that culture within organization is very important on the effective operation of a management system. So those three topics together will be assessed by a study group. And the same holds for these other topics, study groups that have the assignment to do fact finding. How are these topics addressed in current ISO management system standards? What are the current developments in business and society? And what sort of recommendations will these groups give to should the topic be addressed in HLS or in the guidance to HLS um, after the uh, the next meeting uh, in July in Vienna? Okay, so the next meeting is in, in Vienna and, and these working groups will have to give uh, we already have to have results uh, for Vienna, or is it more a, a long-term no, investigation? No, before Vienna, they, uh, they are expected to provide the results of their fact-finding okay. and to provide the task force with a recommendation on how to proceed with the topic. That could be, well, nothing to be done at this revision of HLS. We will mm -hmm. keep it for the future. Or we have the suggestion that the topic be addressed in either the guidance or the core requirements uh, themselves. Okay, and looking after Vienna, what's your view of the, the way the process will work out? Do you have any idea? Now, the ambition is that in Vienna we are able to um, make the first draft for consultation of the new HLS. So we aim at having a draft for circulation in August that will then be circulated to all the technical committees and ISO member bodies for comments and input that we will then address during the third meeting scheduled for the beginning of 2020. And well, it is very much dependent upon the number and type of comments that we will get after the Vienna meeting and also the results of the consultation and the study groups before the Vienna meeting on how the next version of HLS will look like. Mm. So I do not have a crystal ball. It's difficult to guess um, what we will encounter. Yeah. yeah, clear. And if you look at uh, Holland, of course, um, we have a special website um, in, in place for people who want to give feedback or who want to be informed on uh, this process. Uh, of course, this is in Dutch. Yeah? This is purely for the for the Dutch community of users of management system standards. Um, what would you advise people to do yeah? seeing this webinar, hearing uh, the possible impact the management system, the, 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 the change of the uh, HLS uh, might have, and what if they want to give their input? Um, and any user of management system standards should seek uh, contact with its national standards body. Uh, every country has a standards body that is a member of ISO and via that standards body you can provide input normally by becoming a member of a national mirror committee. Uh, we are also in contact with ISO Central Secretariat to, to prepare communications on what is happening. Those will be posted on the 
ISO website. There is a special page on management system standards, and that's a way to be uh, informed. Be kept informed. Uh, but we expect that many, many national standards bodies like NAN will also have special pages and meetings to consult the, the stakeholders. Okay. Well, thank you for so far. Um, uh, as you see, this was just a short introduction on um, uh, the, the, the period coming ahead on the revision of the HLS. As said, in Holland, we have a special uh, page if you want to keep informed on um, the, the development of the HLS. It's uh, www.nen slash HLS. I see some nodding here, so I think I'm correct. Um, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, like we said, this is the first webinar on this topic. What we, what we will do is in the coming period, uh, bring more information on the developments and also try in uh, uh, different webinars to keep you updated. So thank you and maybe until next time.